Beloved, I greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today's message is entitled, The Blood That Speaks. The Blood That Speaks. Let us pray. Oh, beloved. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for bringing us here today. And as we delve into your word, give us the heart of a newborn baby, a child, to accept the word and to grab it with all our mind and give us the courage to carry it all over the world for the edification of your church. Father, we ask for focus. We ask for strength. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. The blood that speaks. Hebrews 12, verse 18 to 24. The blood of Jesus Christ speaks even 2,000 years after it was shed in Calvary. So also is the blood of Abel, Cain's twin brother, the sons of Adam and Eve. In Genesis 4, verse 10, Abel's blood spoke so loudly that it reached the ears of God in heaven. Cain, Abel's twin brother, killed Abel out of jealousy because God accepted Abel's sacrifice but rejected his. Although Abel was dead, his blood had a voice which cried out for vengeance. Whilst Abel's blood cried for vengeance, the pure and holy blood of Jesus Christ, who never sinned but crucified, also had a voice. But unlike Abel's, the blood of the crucified Christ speaks better terms to God on our behalf. Not from earth to heaven, but from heaven to earth. The blood that speaks better terms speaks of the church. And beloved, this is for the leadership of the church. This is for the leadership of the church. The church was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. As we come to the temple in the Old Testament times, we must know God dwelt there and had located his name and his presence there, and that it is accessible to God's people. Beloved, the blood, the blood of Jesus proclaims that you have come to the heavenly Jerusalem to tens of thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Therefore, whenever we worship God, whether in our homes or at church, heaven and earth intersect, and we as citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem stand with the saints of old and the angels in many ways. The blasphemous proclaims the unity of the church and says, you have come to the church of the firstborn whose names 
are written in the Lamb's book of life. Therefore, let us not neglect meeting together, as some have the habit of doing. Rather, let us encourage each other, and all the more so, as you see the day approaching for the righteous judge for the argument of our acquittal. He will point to you, baptized believer. He will point to you and say, as you stand spotless and blameless, covered in the robe of his righteousness. There is no sin or sinner here. It's been paid for and wiped away with my blood. Therefore, Father, you must declare them not guilty. The blood sermon speaks of salvation and the, the prerequisite to salvation is faith, which God has already demanded of his people in Hebrews 11 verse six. That is why Romans three, verse 24 to 25 states, and I read, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. And propitiation here means something which, is satis which satisfies or appeases through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. The blood speaks of better things. It speaks of our responsibility. We must be willing to serve as the one who shed his blood saved. And the warning to those who reject it is in Hebrews 10, verse 28 to 29. He that despised Moses, Moses' law, died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorrow punishment, suppose he shall be taught worthy, who reject the blood of Jesus, under which great opportunity is given for repentance. Beloved, you have come to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better message than the blood of Abel. Jesus shed his blood for us on the cross 2,000 years ago outside of Jerusalem. And the blood still speaks today through your baptism. It still speaks to you that you are cleansed and blameless in the sight of God. Ephesians 5 verse 26 and Galatians 3, 26 to 27. It spoke to you in the words of absolution you heard minutes ago. It speaks to you whenever you receive it in the Lord's Supper. Jesus' blood still speaks. It speaks a better message than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus Christ is the cleansing agent in baptism. This precious blood does not cry out for vengeance, but for forgiveness, not for the punishment of the guilty, but for the justification of the ungodly. Romans 4 verse 5. Not for death, but never ending life. And the best of all is that at a time when all we hear is bad, threatening and frightening news, 
this blast sermon is packed with good news and it's all for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word that has not come to you void but accomplishes its purpose. Father God, as we go our separate ways from here, let us carry in our hearts by the help of the Holy Spirit what we've just heard about the blood of Jesus, that we should never, ever reject the assembly of God's children and the blood because of the shed blood of Calvary. Father God, guard us by your Holy Spirit and lead us so that at the end of it all, we will have cause to say it is the hand of the mighty God that has performed this. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen.